Splatoon is one of the newest IPs from Nintendo. As a new IP, it is actually a very successful franchise with over 16 million copies sold from the series. When the game was first released, it was believed to be a very simple and family-friendly game. The objective of the game is to ink more than the enemy in order to win or claim the turf. It really seems like a simple, not so complex game, but in reality, that is only the beginning. Fans have speculated and have dug deep into the game's lore and story. Today, I will go over the complete timeline of the Splatoon franchise. It all began 12,000 years ago. A kid named Judd was born. He would later be cared for by the brilliant professor we all know and love. Around the same time later, a very important aspect of English culture would be produced. The printer that would determine Splatfest way later in the future would be made. As shown in the second scroll from stage 26, a human was buried with their Wii U and electronics. Definitely a morbid and horrible way for a person to die. Not too much later, the professor knew he had to do something in order for the next civilization to not make the same mistakes humans have made. So he had planned to preserve and inject Judd in order to make Judd immortal and help the future civilizations. Just as the professor had worried, the human race would be extinct as they killed themselves in their final world war. Antarctica had been nuked, which had caused the flooding sea levels to drown much of Earth's land and extinct all humans. 10,000 years after that, there had been no activity of sentient life. 2,000 years ago, now in the Mollusk era, global water levels had lowered. Many marine creatures would evolve to live on land, and some would develop human structure. The mollusk era now begins. Inkling discovers that fish and uses them as a source of energy. Eventually, Jed was released from his capsule and would live with the now evolved Inklings. He would become the earliest judge of turf wars. Around 100 years ago, Encapolis and Calamari County were founded. Captain Cullifish and Octavia were later born. They would both become the leaders of Inklings and Octolings. They both were great friends until the sea levels would rise again, forcing the two species to fight for the land, causing the Octarians to take action and build the great Octo weapons. Captain Cuttlefish, ready to fight for the land, had formed the Squidbeak Splatoon with three other members. The Great Turf War would soon begin. The Octarians and Inklings then fought. The Octarians had the upper hand. Fortunately, a plague was pulled, causing their weapons to be deactivated. This would help the Inklings to be victorious. The Octarians were then forced to live in the ground, where they would build underground domes. Years later, turf war had become a competitive sport among the Inklings. Now, decades before present times, Judge Octavia begins a new career of becoming a disc jockey. As time continues, Octarian domes begin to collapse and lose power, causing a problem for the Octarians. Years later, Pearl, Marina, Callie, and Marie would be born, along with the rest of the agent Slater. Now that Kelly and Marie were children, Inkopolis would host their first folk singing competition. Kelly and Marie would win, beginning their singing careers. Years before the events of Splatoon 1, Annie, Mo, Christy Sean, Jolonzo, and Sheldon began to work at Booyah Base in Inkopolis Plaza. Now that Kelly and Marie were adults, they would begin to host Splatfest and announce the stages in Inkopolis Plaza now forming the Squid Sisters. 
The great sapfish will later be stolen, but then recovered by Agent 3, who is recruited by Captain Cuttlefish. But as Agent 3 for Octavio, a young octoling combat engineer named Marina would be broken from Octavio's control and leaves to become a citizen of Angopolis. The years would carry out normally in the plaza. Behind the scenes, Crystal Industries would be funded by Mr. Grizz. The final splatfest took place and ended with Marie being victorious. The Swiss sisters then moved out of Encopolis Plaza, as Encopolis Square became the new hub area for the young Inklings. Marina finds Pearl and becomes friends with her. Marina realizes Pearl's rapping ability as together start a band. Flo, Bisk, and Chilfonzo begin their shops in Encopolis Square with Sheldon and Christy Sean also starting a business there. Cal and Marie grow more apart during this time. One day Marie visits her parents and their parents ask about Callie. Marie realizes she didn't know how Callie was doing. Marie sees Callie is missing and goes to Octo Valley. She finds DJ Octavia's snow globe broken, growing suspicion. The Great Zafish is then stolen again and Marie moves into Encopolis Square in hopes of finding someone to recruit it. The Squid Sisters become absent for a period of time, causing Off the Hook to take their place to host Encopolis News. Eventually, new splatfests start to take place. Seminids migrate to the waters around Encopolis as they do every 70 years. Inklings are now able to work for Grisco Industries by collecting golden eggs. During the main story of Splatoon 2, Agent 3 faces the last Octoling found. The Octoling hears the Echolomer incantation, and its life changes forever. There, they battled until an unknown entity captured Agent 3, the Octoling, and Captain Cuttlefish, and took them into Deep Sea Metro. Agent 8 loses their memories, and works with Captain Cuttlefish to escape the Deep Sea Metro and find Agent 3. They meet the telephone and must complete a series of tasks in order to obtain the four things. There, Agent 8 and Captain Cuttlefish meet Pearl and Marina, who aid them to completing all the levels needed. Agent 8 finds all four things and the blender is assembled. Agent 8 and Captain Cuttlefish fall for the telephone's trap. Fortunately, Agent 3 arrives in time and knocks out the telephone. Agent 3 is unconscious and Agent 8 escapes through the hole Agent 3 had made. Agent 8 then must fight to reach the surface, but must face sanitize Agent 3 to get there. Agent 3 is then incautious again, but they manage to reach the surface with the help of Pearl and Marina. A human-like statue comes out of the waters as it's later revealed that the telephone was Commander Tartar. His plans were to wipe out the Inklings and Octarians in order to create the ultimate life form. Marina uses her hyper bombs in order to defeat the statue. But Agent 8 must manually detonate them. Commander Tartar is defeated and Agent 8 heads to Engulfless Square. A little after that, an inkling is recruited by Marie in order to save Callie and the Great Zapfish. Sheldon aids them with weapons to help defeat Doctorians. Together, Callie and the Great Zapfish are recovered. The Great Zapfish is placed on top of the Engoblis Tower once again. Marie finds a chat room and checks on her grandfather and tells him to get ready to come home. She had planned to prepare a meal for him once he had returned. Years later, the final splatfest will take place. Chaos vs. Order was the theme. Which world would the people of Encopolis rather live in? The winner would decide the fate of Encopolis. Chaos and emerge victorious, causing another story to just begin.